Okay, my friends, this is going to be exciting. I got the microscope going. This is what everybody would consider to be basically sandstone. But watch as I move the microscopes. I move the sample over from the sandstone towards this, which I call an abrupt transition because I made this. Now let me focus in a little closer if I can. There we go. Now, you see that? That's an abrupt transition. Way back up here, watch up here, is where the sandstone is, which is also part of the body chemistry. But as you come here, you start to get abrupt transitions from the sandstone, which is literally skin tissues. And then it works its way into the tendinous muscle, muscle and so forth, as you can see here. Now, this is chicken tissue. I made this, oh, five, six years ago. And it is bendable, but it's pretty, pretty solid right now. And it's obviously organic, if you, if you know anything about organics. Maybe you've been watching what I've been showing for the last few years. Well, a number of years now. This goes, I made this, oh, five, six years ago at least. More than that. Now, There's a whole lot of chemistry here, but what happens, and, I, and I'm going to explain the process I use to make this, because they're showing a stone now that is flexible, and, it's, and I can show you, you're just going to see the red blood in it and everything, and the sandstone, and they don't understand the, the process. I do. Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. I'm going to explain to you about this. It's called Ita Kalumite the world's most bendable rock. Well, they call this sandstone. But look at that spot right there. That is blood. And that is blood. And if you can see it, and you look carefully, it's actually a round blood vessel. I don't know if you'd be able to see it in this particular, you know, looking at a video of a video of a video, that type of thing. But watch what happens as he moves this rock. It's bendable almost like leather because it basically is. I will explain to you the process. I made this. It really is just sandstone. And I was just wondering how useful it would be inside of a dry stone wall because it would take up any any slack and fill up any gaps. All right, now, you see the, these are the bloody areas. Now, let me show you what this is. This is a very, very tiny piece of what's called interstitium, which is areolar tissue, and it's loaded with collagen fibers, which are flexible fibers, and that's why your skin can do all the things it does. You know, your areolar tissue just below your skin. I'm going to show you the anatomical of this, and I made some of this stuff. I have it right here, actually. This, this is the same, it's, it's a little different. I have a video showing this, but this is, it's the same sort of stuff. It's just, it, and mine is flexible too. It, it's, it's hard, it's pretty hard, but it's, it is flexible. And this was from chicken tissue, and I will explain the process. And when I show you down in the tiny little spots down in here, this is sandstone. Exactly like that. It's exactly like that. Because you run into transitions between where the bone was and then the tendon and then the muscle. And there's all these different little transitions. I call them abrupt transitions because they are. They're abrupt. It comes to here and then bam. Then it goes into that and then bang. It goes into the next one. When they break, psh, those are the places they snap. Now, I'm going to go through this and explain to you. This is nothing more than basically leather. And it, the reason it was flexible in this manner and most of it is not there's only found a couple of places in the world it's because of the chemical reactivity of the organic material to what was in the waters where this stuff settled out and everything bleeds out and everything does what's called nucleophilic substitution nucleophilic substitution means that the the stuff that's in here, your skin and everything, it's normally going to move around and come back to where it's supposed to be until you get old like me. <laughs> but that skin is flexible. And when you die, it either rots away or it becomes hard as quartzite, basically, or it does something else, which is preserve the collagen fibers. 
And I will show you, I have many, many instances of this. From all over the world, people have sent me. And I have my own, too. So, let's get into it. All right, I'm going to show you our, my stuff, or maybe I already have. This is the skin, and that turns into sandstone. Just below it, you have the interstitium, which is the collagen fibers and these little rubbery little flexible things that open these back up. This is called interstitium areolar tissue. It gives you the, the flexibility for your skin to come back after it gets stretched. Now, in a condition where those this this particular flexible sandstone is, these collagen fibers were never turned into sandstone. They were turned into a more or less stable, flexible state, just like a belt. A belt is nothing more than 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 skin tissue. That's all it is, and it stays flexible. Now because it was treated in a certain way. They call it tanning. This was treated in a different way. It might have had some something from the kidneys or some bile or I don't know what, but something invaded these collagen fibers and said, okay, let's all take it easy. Let's get together. You stay with me. We'll all stay flexible. Everything will be fine. Just Let's just get stable. And that's what happens. The stuff that you're always transitioning through your body. Everything moves. Every single molecule in your body is continuously in a state of instability. When you die, it rots or it becomes stable. If it becomes stable in the correct manner, like a plastic, that's what you got. Okay, what you're seeing right here is a belt. It's just a leather belt. And it's genuine leather. It says it on there. I don't know. <laughs> now, what are we going to see when we focus in on that belt? We're going to see the interstitium. Okay, so here we go. Get ready. Now, let me focus in a little better. Alright, you see those little black balls? They're all tied to these fibers everywhere. Now, we're, we're, and they, were, they matted this down and they made it, it. All this is is skin and the areolar tissue under the skin of a cow. Now, when you get to the hole where the belt goes through and it stretches, you see this? Let me see if I can. I'm having a hard time finding the. There it is. There we go. Now, you see that? That's the interstitium little fibers that run through the collagen. And that's why that belt, I mean, that uh, stone can flop around a little bit because these are still in this tanning phase. Literally, it's almost just like they were tanned. Now, it was a natural process and it only happens in certain places in the world. And that's because those certain places, the chemistry was exactly right to do the nucleophilic substitution, which changes this fleshy stuff into this flexible stuff. All right, made a change in plan. We're going to just end it here very shortly, and I'm going to make a very long presentation that you can do this yourself. I did this many years ago. I tested different chemistry and different metals and different salts and different acids, and then using telluric cur currents. Telluric currents are the natural electricity that hits the earth. Static and electricity and lightning and all that has to go through the earth. And when it does, it interacts with the molecules that are in the earth. It's, it's called, they call telluric currents. Look them up. This is a, some kind of waterfowl, a goose or a duck or something. And that's, that's what happens to them. They can become solidified like this. That's the neck. It's kind of hard to see. You have to put it in the right kind of shadow to pick up on the, the differences. Because once the nucleophilic substitution happens, you look at it and you say, oh, that's just sandstone, that's just, they call this, um, oh man, I can't even think of it now. It, it is fascia, and it's the same collagens and so forth that coat every single membrane surface. Now, when I say membrane surface, your skin is a membrane, you have membranes on your organs, Feathers are membranes. They, anything that keeps you away from the, another part of the world or the environment or the, another part of your body is a membrane. If those membranes get breached, that's when you get sick. I, I, there's a lot to this that's not just rocks and dirt and, and, and 
our ancient past, let me tell you, and there is just whoa, whoa, more a lot. So I can't get into it all right now, but I'm going to teach you and how you can teach your kids how to do this. If they wanted them to learn chemistry, anatomy, biology, molecular interactions, the whole nine yards, we're going to do it. Now this is Action Lab is where I got this today. I don't steal anything from anybody. I'm just showing trying to make sense of the things that everybody shows and says, oh, how could this be? Well, that's what I do. <laughs> and here's another bendable rock over here. So this is Action Lab. Good guy. Nice guy. I'm not, put, I'm not disparaging anybody. I am trying to make sense of the things I see, just like he is. He's saying, how could this happen? Well, how do you break it? And they, they're talking about sedimentary layers. Let me just show you something real quick, and then I'm going to end it. All right, I think I already showed you the thing I made, which is this right here, which was the chicken tissue. You see down here? That's what I'm looking at is the chicken tissue. Now, right under it is the skin of a giant creature, and it's, it's the same. Quartzite turns, skin turns into quartzite. Now, it can erode, yes, and turn into sedimentary rock. Now, let me turn the lights down, because this, this thing can be really cool looking when you get the correct lighting. You see all that stuff coming out of the skin? That's the skin. Now, you go just below the skin, and you're down in here in what is, is muscle and areolar tissue. And you go down deeper, and you get into the real muscle. You see that? That's the areolar tissue right there. You see all these little pockets? That's the reason that thing bent, because it was in a condition where, like, like I did mine in salt water, and so th this wouldn't bend like the other thing did. There's, there's a little chemistry here, but trust me, I, I know what I'm talking about, it, it, and, and I'm going to show you in extreme detail, and you'll be able to do this yourself. If you got kids, I mean, you might want to show them how to think about things, because this is not sedimentary rock. See where I'm looking right here? That's not sedimentary, that's muscle. That is muscle tissue, my friends. And that goes back, this is the muscle, and it breaks here at all the abrupt transitions where the bundles start to really turn into what they call sarcomeres, or little, little blocks. This is an abrupt transition. Let me see if I can get back here. All right. That, whoops, wrong way. All right, that abrupt transition is between the muscle and the tendon, and the tendon wraps itself into this area here, which is where there was a bone or a shoulder or whatnot. And these are the fibers that are tendinous fibrils. Now, no anatomist, zero, can deny that. I worked with the best anatomists in the world, and trust me, they know exactly what I'm saying, and they agree 100% that it could be, they, they, say, they say they don't want to say for sure this is a human being or what it is, but it has the exact anatomy of the things that I say it is, and that is either a shoulder or some joint, and then the muscle pulled in the shoulder and did all that kind of stuff, and this was the outermost layer that faces the other part of the world and that is tough 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 as hell that's why it turns into the real scrappy stuff and I have huge creatures here DNA certified the things I'm talking about are not in question they are just in denial so when you come back this is the introduction next time we're gonna go in deep and I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself and if any chemist or any biologists, anatomists, paleontologists, anthropologists, any is exists wants to debate. I, that's what I'm waiting for. Zero will will come forward. There's no there's no there's no way to, to deny it. There's only it, but there's no way they, no, nobody ever asks any questions. I guess I'm extremely well, good at explaining it. That's all I can take. <laughs> because nobody ever has any questions. So what else can I assume? I love you all. Come back. Oh, what a world we live in.